about India in 15 questions. What is the caste system? Why are cows sacred? Your questions answered. Is India very poor? Yes and no, because India is a country with extremes of inequality. It is now the world's fifth biggest economy, so it generates a lot of money. In 2023, it had 169 billionaires, surpassed only by China, with 495, and the USA with 735. But over 40% of India's wealth is in the hands of just 1% of its people. Of the country's 1.4 billion people, around 83% are considered low income. Among those, around 140 million were living in poverty, defined by the United Nations as living on an income of less than $2 a day in 2019-2021. But that's a huge improvement on 2005-2006, when 55% were living in poverty. Why is India's population so big? The fact that India and China have large populations today is a byproduct of history. In the past, both were extremely rich, developed civilizations, able to support large populations. Traditionally, China had more people, but decades of population control policies there have reduced numbers. For now, India's population is still growing. That is the product of birth levels in the 1960s, when the number of children per couple was around six. Today, the number has dropped to two, and as a result, the population will begin to decline around 2050. What is India's political system? India is the world's largest democracy, its elections including almost one in eight of the world's population. This is a massive operation, which is why the elections take place over 38 days with different regions voting on different dates. There are around 1 million polling stations, some so remote that election officials have to be airlifted in by helicopter. Once the votes are counted, the party with the most seats in the lower house, the Lok Sabha, of India's parliament, forms a government led by a prime minister. This is the person with real power in India. The role of the president is largely ceremonial. What language do Indians speak? On a government level, India has two languages, English and Hindi, which is spoken by 57% of Indians. But a total of 22 languages are officially recognized, and that is just the start. Add less spoken languages and regional dialects, and estimates vary from around 120 to 700 different mother tongues. Is India an ally of the U.S. or China? Neither. Since independence in 1947, India has pursued a policy of strategic non-alignment and has never been an ally of either the USA or any other superpower. During the Cold War, it maintained relations with the Soviet Union, and most of its military hardware is Russian. In the past 25 years, it has opened up to partnership with the USA in key areas, such as nuclear energy, defense and technology. But it also maintains ties with Brazil, Russia, China, and others through the BRICS group of emerging market nations. It has refused to condemn Russia's invasion of Ukraine and has continued buying Russian oil. What is India's main religion? More than 80% of Indians are Hindu, and India is home to 94% of the global Hindu population. With origins, teachings, and stories going back more than 5,000 years, Hinduism is not a dogma-based religion such as Christianity. Indeed, many Indians argue that it is best not to compare it to the European concept of religion at all but to think of it as a way of life deeply rooted in spirituality, morality, and ethics, or dharma. Each person has their concept of dharma within the Hindu system and is on their own spiritual and intellectual journey. There are temples and gurus, 
but no recognized authority or religious hierarchy. Buddhism is a spiritual system that evolved out of Hinduism in India 2,500 years ago, spreading across Asia, but ultimately losing favor within India itself. Do Hindus believe in a god? As with the ancient Greeks, Hindus can venerate a pantheon of multiple deities, each of which has different areas of influence over life. In fact, it is possible that the pantheistic belief systems generally found across Europe before the Christian era all shared the same origin as Hinduism. As in ancient Greece, India has a vast repertoire of myths featuring Hindu gods who interact directly with humanity. While some will believe in the literal truth of these gods, others may see them as metaphors for different forces in the universe and symbols of an ultimate reality. They can serve as visual aids in meditation and point of focus for the manifestation of a person's desires. Do Hindus believe in reincarnation? In the Hindu and Buddhist concepts of existence, life is an infinite cycle that they call samsara. When you die, your soul reincarnates in a new body that may or may not be human. What form your next incarnation takes, and whether you are born into a good or bad situation, depends on your karma, the sum total of your good and bad actions in life. While reincarnation might sound like a good thing, for Hindus and Buddhists, the ultimate goal is for the soul to escape the material world and return to the purely spiritual dimension from which it originated. This is known to the Hindus as Brahman, or the one ultimate reality, and to Buddhists as Nirvana. Why are cows sacred in India? In Hinduism, the cow represents motherly love, fertility, and nature's riches. It is a symbol of strength, pacifism, and generosity, providing humans with milk and fertilizer. As such, it has long been considered a spiritual crime to kill a cow or even to inconvenience it, which is why it is common for cows to cause traffic jams in India. The fact that Muslim teaching does not stop believers from eating beef is often a spark for intercommunal violence in India. Do Indians eat curry? During the colonial era, the British adopted the word curry to cover virtually the whole of Indian cuisine, and it frustrates many Indians that this error is now global. Indeed, traditionally, there is no dish called curry in India, nor will you find the generic curry powder that is sold in European supermarkets. Indian cuisines vary enormously across the country and use a multitude of herbs and spices, of which the curry leaf is just one. Interestingly, many typical ingredients of modern Indian food, such as tomatoes, potatoes, peas, and carrots, were introduced by European traders in the 16th and 17th centuries. As for chilies, they were introduced by the Portuguese in the late 1400s. Traditionally, Indians used black pepper to give heat to their dishes. Are all Indians vegetarian? No. Vegetarianism is considered a dietary ideal among many Hindus, but the idea of India as a predominantly vegetarian nation is a myth. According to research, approximately 20% of Indians are vegetarian, and the practice of vegetarianism varies depending on family, social class, and more notably, region. Three quarters of people in the northern region of Punjab are vegetarian, for instance. Meanwhile, southern India is often thought of as the home of vegetarian cuisine in India, but only 6% of people in the southern city of Chennai avoid meat completely. The principal meats are chicken and lamb because the sacred status of cows to Hindus means only 7% of Indians eat beef. Fish is also common in southern regions. What is the caste system? For around 3,000 years, India's Hindu majority has divided itself into four social classes known as castes, which then subdivide 
into 25,000 subcasts. Cast is determined by birth, and there is almost no way to change it. The top caste are the Brahmins, who were considered to be intellectuals. This caste includes priests. Next come the ruling and warrior class, Kshatriya, then the merchant class, Vaishya. The lowest caste, the Shudras, do more menial jobs. Below the Shudras come the Dalits, who are outside the caste order and often work as toilet cleaners. Historians say that the system was fairly relaxed until the British reinforced it in the 19th century, using caste as a defining characteristic in national censuses. Following India's independence in 1947, discrimination on the basis of caste was banned by the Constitution, and Dalits have been elected to India's highest judicial and political offices, but the prejudice still persists, with people generally marrying within their caste. Do Indian women still wear saris? The sari is an eight-meter rectangle of cloth, traditionally worn by women in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Nepal. There are more than 100 ways of wearing one, and the price can vary from a few dollars to around $10,000 for the handmade ones. One survey shows 80% of Indian households have bought at least one sari. Saris are not, however, the most practical items of clothing, and younger women and city dwellers usually opt for Western clothing or a salwa kameez, loose trousers and a tunic, for day-to-day -day use, but a colourful sari for a wedding or other party. In rural areas, however, not wearing a sari is often seen as immodest, even though women may show more bare skin in a sari than in Western clothes. Are Indian men and women equal? Equality between men and women is enshrined in India's constitution, and researchers report a relatively small proportion of women, 16%, who say that they felt discriminated against because of their sex. That said, the situation varies across different regions, with women in the South feeling more inequality than those in the North. There are also big differences between rural and urban areas. 24% of women, over 15, in cities have jobs, for example, compared to 37% in rural zones. Nationally, the level of women in work has fallen from 32% in 2005 to 24% in 2022 and pay rates for women are far lower than those for men. Overall, men earn 82% of India's labor income and women 18%. Violence against women, both domestic and in society as a whole, is also high and has been rising in recent years, although this may be due to more cases being reported than in the past. Are Indian marriages always arranged? More than 90% of Indian couples are in arranged marriages, and polls suggest that a majority of people are happy with this system. It originated with high-caste families making matches between themselves that consolidated their status and assets, as was the case with Europe's nobility for centuries. Over time, the practice spread throughout society, with families often turning to professional matchmakers to find suitable partners for their children. Today, the Internet has become central to the process, with families listing details of their eligible children, including occupation, religion, caste, skin complexion, weight, and more. 